Welcome everyone. This is a video on improving the reliability of a Home Assistant plus Shelly IoT device uh, environment. I'm a new user to it, but I have four decades of experience building and running IoT and telecommunication companies as an electrical engineer and software developer. So I've uh, been working globally with industrial automation, uh, building automation, healthcare, all these different mission critical environments. And so when I got into home automation, I was starting to think a little bit about reliability and performance from the get go. And I was a bit surprised that there were all these YouTube videos that extolled the virtues of Shelly Cloud and Home Assistant and Shelly integrations. And then I ended up with all these problems with it and nobody was talking about these problems. So hence this video for people that want to know the truth and want more uh, concrete information on what to do uh, in terms of building a more reliable system or solving key problems with reliability. First thing you need to know, Shelly API Docs, this website, very important. It's got all kinds of cool information. And you can see that there's three protocols that Shelly really supports. There's, there's their own internal protocol. There's MQTT, which I'm relying on for my system now and I'm gonna recommend strongly. And then there is the um, way of communicating with Shelly devices using uh, the RESTful API. And, and that is somewhat covered by um, all of these push and get um, IP commands that you can, you can issue and, and, and get data on. So I'll show you very briefly. There's a, there's an, um, a plugin in Chrome that you can use. Uh, the Chrome browser called Arc that um, basically a lot of the internet and a lot of cloud computing is based on push uh, and, and, and get um, as ways of sending information and uh, and post. So here's one. It's not a well-documented um, instruction, but it's an important one, which is how to change the update period because an empty MQTT devices are, are push-based. They're not poll-based. So rather than Home Assistant, reaching out to every device all the time and saying, what's going on, what's going on? And then getting these big uh, broadcasts of sort of endless amounts of data from the devices. This is, this is um, uh, MQTT will just blast to you just the data that you want, a very narrow amount of data, and it's, and it's a single direction uh, transmit. And there's certain QoS where you can go out and decide whether the, communication is is robust or not and I'll talk about that later but basically MQT update period if you send that to a device then it'll change the update period um, so under MQTT you can see the update period is 30 I could change that but arc uh, so that's one way of talking to devices uh, is in, and for debugging kind of important if you're if you're if you're interested in uh, getting more nuanced uh, you can always go to the Shelly devices themselves and you can use the web server that's built into each Shelly device to talk to it and set it up. Obviously, that's the way you initially initiate um, the devices and, and, and configure them, but it's also a way that you can go in there and make more advanced. So if, with MQTT, you go under settings and then advanced, you would then put in your username and password and all this information and off you go. And um, down here is your, your, your QoS. So QoS zero is it just broadcasts once, and if you, if the MQTT broker that's tied to Home Assistant gets the packet, then you're good. And if it doesn't, it just doesn't try again. One, there's intermediate level of handshaking, and two is a guaranteed transmission, but it can be slower and take a lot more data on the network. So I only use it for key devices, and this device is controlling my um, furnace, so I want it to be really, really reliable. Anyway, back to this document. So here, there's all kinds of ways of talking to the Shelly devices. Under MQTT, there's not a ton of device support in terms of what it will and will not let you do, but it's precise and it's accurate. It's, it's push-based. So when you go and you try to set up a home assistant environment, normally you would go under configuration and then integrations, and you would see all of your Shelly devices would appear and uh, you would then accept them. All the IP addresses for all the Shelly devices would automatically be discovered. 
using their protocol, um, which is based on the RESTful API, and it doesn't work very well. So I bailed on it. I've actually hidden all the Shelly integrations that pop up automatically. And so if you go into my file editor and you look at my YAML configuration, you'll see that it is full of uh, MQTT configuration data. And the reason for that is simple. I end up with far less packets in my network. I end up with um, having um, a very precise control and uh, I don't end up with all these crazy situations that I was dealing with where the devices would drop offline or you, you could partially control them but not fully control them. It, it kind of it's like Home Assistant lost its mind. And um, yeah, so this is my YAML major master configuration file. I'm not gonna go through how to set up devices in great detail, but I will scan through this and let you read it at your own time. So I'll move it down a bit and pause. Then I'll move it down a bit and pause. And I've got all my sensors and all my switches set up here. And I've got even some math functions uh, here to combine sensors and um, make even some error corrections in some of the signals I've been getting where I'm not getting the exact right value and I'm correcting for it. So there we go. And there's what's called utility meters that, that roll up and give you daily, weekly, monthly, yearly um, totals, which is useful for things like energy monitoring. So I will go back now to um, the overview. So I've got uh, several different screens. Um, I've got my energy management screen here. I have my HVAC, which is heating and ventilation and air conditioning um, here. And then I've got a third one, which is for monitoring my CPU and my basically my Raspberry Pi, just keeping an eye on, on memory usage and uh, processor utilization in case there's an issue. So yeah, I would have crazy things happen with the stock APIs and the stock integrations. I'd be having the heating system turn on and not turn off when it should. And then the device just dropping off and, you know, causing my house to get like, ma you know, massively hot. Um, so I did a couple things. I put relays in parallel, uh, in series with each other. So you'll see here, I've got a master heating relay and then a backup relay. And then same thing with cooling. Um, I've got uh, basically the idea is if one fails, the other one's gonna continue to run uh, properly. And in other words, I can always have things turn off even if one of them died and stuck on. So that's the first piece of advice is to try to think about what's critical in your system and then design the system so it's resilient. Next thing is I use timers. So if you go into the Shelly one device here, you'll see that I have an auto off timer set for 20 minutes. Um, and the idea is that if this thing craps out, then it's going to, if I lose connection to it and it's still running, it'll shut off. So right now you can see auto off, it's going to count down to zero here. And the computer, the Raspberry Pi home, home assistant's going to have to turn it back on after 20 minutes. So it's just a safety function. So the first thing is go and use MQTT and get away from all the hassles and the crap associated with the uh, Shelly stock integrations. Don't trust them. Next thing is use Node-RED as the um, uh, sort of plugin because all of your states and all of your monitoring can actually be accomplished in this environment. Now what this is, this is my heating system, heating and cooling. So I've divided my time of day up and then I've got a heating table and it slowly ramps the heating up. So if you actually look at how during the day over here, 10 p.m. it starts cooling down and then it rises back up and there's a downstairs temperature and an upstairs temperature and it will often in my house, if it gets too hot in the basement, then it, it, what it'll do is it'll just turn off the system and it takes longer for the upstairs to, to get up to temperature. But that logic is built in here. And then there's some 
protective stuff here and there's also heating modes whether the heating mode is on or off and the cool, cooling mode is on or off or anyway I've got the same thing a little lower here which is for the air conditioning in the afternoon it lets the temperature rise in the house a little bit during the day so when the cold air is pooling in the basement it'll recirculate that air from the basement but there's some really important things about um, node red it runs as a parallel application to home assistant on the raspberry pi and so if home assistant's crapping out this thing's still running and th there's a whole bunch of really cool things so this is a disabled environment right now but you can monitor mqtt packet flows you can inject them you can um, measure them monitor them you can open up debug windows um, so if you're trying to design a system and you're an engineer you want to know if it's working or not you want to be able to see whether things are are working and with the stock home automation uh, home assistant Shelly setup there's no way for you to monitor the packets that are going back and forth and understand what's happening as soon as you've opened up node red you can start monitoring things you can see what's going on you can monitor the the the, the, the logic flows so this is the first one the next flow I've got here is for humidity um, in the house and then the next flow here is for outdoor lighting control related to sunrise and sunset events and then the really really important one here that I've had to implement to make the system reliable is a watchdog environment which is very common in industrial automation systems where you're monitoring the system and if something goes wrong you will try to recover and so what this does is once a day it restarts home assistant and reboots all the key Shelly devices so Home Assistant, you would, I'll just open this up. You can see over here, there's the um, way you would configure this call service node to reset, uh, to restart Home Assistant. It only takes about 10 seconds for it. Here's something a little bit more violent. I only do this manually, but you can restart the Raspberry Pi entirely with this command and that call service node. And then all of these nodes here are just IP calls. So it's the IP address slash reboot. If you just post that, the device will reboot. I found that if I didn't reboot my devices maybe once a week, they'd start doing weird things. Sometimes they wouldn't respond, they wouldn't provide the MQTT packets, or if you told a relay to turn on or turn off, sometimes it would or it wouldn't. They'd get a little bit ratty after a while. It's like they get internally corrupted. Maybe there's memory leaks, maybe you know the firmware is not perfect from Shelly. But I found that giving the whole system a good kick in the ass once in a day, these devices all come up within about five or 10 seconds. The whole system comes right back online and you don't miss a beat. And it keeps the system fresh, keeps the memory use on the Raspberry Pi down to reasonable levels, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, it's healthy. I am thinking about putting a reboot once a month in for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, rather than just manually, but I'm just waiting for it to crap out and so far it's been rock solid So the Raspberry Pi with the Hass IO OS version of Linux has been great so bottom line is You don't want to rely on the stock integration. You want to take you don't want to rely on Shelly Cloud because it's a toy and It's not meant for for prime time as far as I'm concerned you want to get to MQTT use the um, example of maybe I've given you there of my setup there's lots of other ones on the internet um, and and use node red for all your debug and all your logic it's it's brilliant um, and and best of luck to you and I just hope that you have better experience than I did which is about two months of just pulling my hair out trying to get my system to be stable and trying not to pollute my my Wi-Fi my home network which is like you know it's a high-end gigabit network and I was getting, you know, a couple hundred megabits throughput for streaming services and other things when I would normally get, you know, the full gigabit uh, because there's just too many packets in flight on the network, too much chattering between all these IoT devices I have. And with MQTT and changing the update periods, I was able to calm that network down, get a lot quieter and get all my regular network performance back up to, to, to the levels that I was uh, paying for, basically. So that's, that's my video. I hope you enjoy it and I hope it's useful to you and best of luck.